Greetings, and welcome to the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association's Patients Come First podcast series. Podcast episodes are available on VHHA.com and popular podcast hosting apps, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and many others. Podcast episodes also air each Saturday at noon and Sunday at 10 a.m. on 100.5 FM, 107.7 FM, 92.7 FM, and 8.20 a.m. across Central Virginia, and Wednesdays at 1 p.m. on 93.9 FM in Richmond. Send any questions, comments, or feedback to PCFpodcast at VHHA.com. That's PCFpodcast at VHHA.com. I'm Will Sullivan with the VHHA team, and today the adrenaline is pumping. We are exhilarated to be joined by Jordan Hatmaker of Virginia Beach. Last November, Jordan miraculously survived a skydiving accident when her parachute malfunctioned, sending her hurtling toward Earth at a high rate of speed. With the help of a positive attitude, support system, and attentive medical care and continuing physical therapy, Jordan is on the road to recovery. In just a moment, we'll learn more about Jordan, discuss her accident and its aftermath, and more. But first, welcome to the program, Jordan. Hey, Will. Thanks for having me. To begin with, I want to ask you the obvious question. How are you doing these days? I gather you've regained your mobility while you continue to do physical therapy, but tell us where things stand with you in terms of progress towards physical recovery. Oh, uh, yeah. Everything has been going really great. I'm almost back to 100% just working on my strength and um, endurance, trying to get back to where I was prior to my accident. We should tell people you're no novice skydiver at all. You've done multiple tandem jumps and then 16 solo jumps since 2015. The fateful jump that caused your injuries happened, like we said, back in November 2021 when you jumped from a height of more than two miles above the earth. And while you successfully made this jump before, something went wrong this time with your parachute at about 4,000 feet, which is, from our calculations, about 20 seconds roughly from impact with the ground. So tell us what happened from there, what you were thinking in that moment, what exactly went wrong, and just sort of walk us through that whole process. Yeah, so at 4,000 feet, I pulled my parachute per usual and when I pulled the pilot chute which is the small parachute that comes out before the main one it wrapped completely around my right leg so my right leg was suspended in the air and I was falling without a parachute and I I went into strategy mode and was trying to get the pilot chute off of my leg trying to get my shoe off and then before I knew it my reserve had automatically fired. And what happens when the reserve shoot fires? So that's an automatic thing that happens once you reach a certain altitude, I gather. And so when that happened, fill us in on on what happened then. Yeah, sure. My AAD, which is the automated system within your um, parachute rig, fires your reserve parachute automatically if you haven't already pulled it. If you're going at a significant rate of speed, which I believe is 80 or 85 miles per hour, or you reach an altitude of 750 feet above the ground. So mine fired automatically. And when that fired, I regained control for a couple seconds. But what that did was it made my main canopy kind of come loose from its bag finally, and it popped out. And you would think that two canopies are better than one which typically it would be, I would be able to steer both at the same time. But in my case, they went into this rare malfunction called a down plane and the two canopies dragged away from each other and accelerated me towards the ground. So you suffered a spinal cord injury and several broken vertebrae, and then you were hospitalized at Centera Norfolk General Hospital for an extended period of time. And as we mentioned, didn't walk again for three months. And Unsurprisingly, your physical therapy continues to this day. So if you would, tell us what doctors initially told you about your prognosis and how you might have met or exceeded those expectations in your recovery. Sure. Yeah, my doctors weren't sure about what my mobility was going to be. I couldn't move or feel anything below my waist for a while. I could wiggle my toes. So they knew that that was a positive thing, but they didn't know the extent of what my mobility would be. I told them that I would be in the hospital for less than a month, and they weren't too sure about that, but I exceeded their expectations with that, and in inpatient rehab, they said that I would be there about two and a half weeks, and I was there about a week and a day. So, yeah, I've I've exceeded expectations so far. I've been really, really fortunate with my accident, and 
in all the care that I've had and the doctors and the physical therapists have been definitely a huge part of my progress. That answer there highlights something that I want to focus on a little bit here. Having done a little bit of research into your story before this conversation, looked at your social media profiles and things like that, I found your Instagram account where you've sort of documented your recovery process. And I have to say, you seem to have this incredibly positive outlook. And for folks who might not have seen your Instagram, the handle is oh shoot Jordan, shoot spelled like parachute, which I think is just fantastic. And I, I think one of the most incredible things to me about this whole story, other than the fact that you were able to survive, is is your genuine positive outlook. Can you tell me about that? Is that something that you've had your whole life, or did you, did that come as a result of this experience, or, or what what's that been like? I've pretty much always been a really positive and glass half full type of girl, so that really helped me through this process and through this journey, and. I've just been able to kind of find humor in the tough things and then, you know, the little things. Of course, I've definitely thrown myself a pity party a time or two, but I've really just tried to maintain optimism and find times to laugh at myself and laugh about the situation that I've been in. Well, I got a good chuckle out of that Instagram handle, so thank you for that. (laughs) Your story has been covered by media around the globe, unsurprisingly, and I'm sure you've been asked countless times if you plan to skydive again. I'm going to ask you one more time, but I have to give you some stats first. Um, And this is not to place you in any direction or the other, but just to provide some context to our listeners here. So statistically speaking, people have a greater chance of losing their life from a lightning strike, a dog bite a wasp sting, or even a bike accident than they do from skydiving. So with that context, what are your current thoughts about skydiving in the future? I love those stats. I definitely haven't heard those before. Well, there you go. Um, (laughs) So that just validates the fact that I am definitely planning on skydiving again. I'm not going to let this rare accident hold me back from something that I love to do and skydiving for me was all about overcoming my fears and, um, you know, just having confidence in myself that I could do anything. And I wouldn't be true to myself if I didn't continue and at least skydive once or twice more. Well, I'm glad to hear that. That's great life advice for all of us, I think. Well, thanks so much for sharing your story with us, Jordan. Before we wrap up, we'd like to close each episode with a few more lighthearted questions for our guests. And just to introduce a little bit of chance for our return listeners, we've created a list of 10 mystery questions. And so to get us started, if you would choose two numbers between one and 10, and I'll ask you those corresponding questions. Sure. I'll choose six and seven. All righty. First question is this. In the hypothetical scenario that you had one-time access to a time machine with limits, you can either travel 100 years into the past or 100 years into the future. Which direction do you choose and why? I would choose to go 100 years in the past, see what it was like back then, and then come back to present day. And I think I would be really grateful for all the stuff that we have now. I think it would make me even more thankful for everything that we have today. That's an interesting take on that question. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, and the final question of the episode, if you could choose one superpower, what would it be? The answer to this question throughout my life has always been to fly. Yeah, I was scared you were going to say that. (laughs) Yeah. So that's pretty ironic that that's the question that I would choose. So, yeah, I would fly. And, you know, this time I wouldn't have to rely on a parachute. It would just be my superpower anyway. That is true. And I I think I would probably choose to fly, too. So that's for... Skydiving folk and non-skydiving folk, it's its pretty universal there. Well, thank you so much for answering those questions and sharing your story with us. That's going to bring another episode of the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association's Patients Come First podcast to a close. If you like what you heard, please make sure to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and subscribe so you know when new episodes are released. We want to once again thank our guest, Jordan Hatmaker, for joining us today. Seriously, thanks so much for doing this, Jordan. Thanks so much, Will. And anybody that wants to follow along, you can follow me on Instagram at oshootjordan, O-H-C-H-U-T-E-J-O-R-D-A-N. Thanks again for having me. Thank you so much.